The city of Spoleto stands on a mighty limestone spur, known as Sant'Elia, that juts out 452 metres above sea level and overlooks the deeply incised Ticino River Valley. According to legend, Spoleto owes its name to two Greek words, spau and litos, meaning detached stone, probably indicating that the rock on which the city is built detached from Monteluco during a landslide. The Great Rock is the last of a series of hills dominating the plain. These include Colle Risana, Monte Pincio, Colle Attivoli and Monte Luco, which in turn are bounded by the steep slopes of Mount Fionchi and Mount Somma. The many springs in the district are fed by waters that infiltrated the permeable surface. The surrounding plain instead is formed by impermeable clay soil. These characteristics favoured the first human settlements. The most ancient archaeological finds are from the Middle and Late Bronze Age. During restoration work on the Albornoziano fortress, fragments of stucco with cord-like decorations came to light, together with items of late Iron Age huts and several small votive figurines of warriors and a bronze spear. This bears witness to the presence in the 5th century BC of an Umbrian type of sanctuary situated on the hill. During the Iron Age, human settlements spread all over the hill, particularly on the northwest slope, where later the city would eventually rise. Among the objects found in the necropolises relative to pre-Roman settlement in the area are some impressive clay vases and tomb furnishings. Only towards the end of the 4th century BC, or the beginning of the 3rd, did the process of urban aggregation definitely begin in Spoleto, as it did in other Umbrian centres. Important evidence of Roman penetration into the area can be found in a treasure trove of bronzes, dating back to the time of Roman colonisation. The first news of Spoleto dates back to the 3rd century BC. In this period of disputes between the Umbrians and the Romans, the town was caught up in the repression that followed the victory of Sentino by the Romans in 295 BC. In 241 BC, mention is made of the emergence of a Roman colony at Spoleto, one of 12 colonies founded after Rimini, 
none of which had the right to connubium, marriage rights, or currency, but only of trade with the Romans. The wide valley of Spoleto was divided between the Roman settlers and exploited to the full. Such exploitation meant that many woods were deforested. The woods supplied the new colony and Rome with an enormous quantity of lumber. A vast area of the valley crossed by the river Clitunno was thickly covered in trees, as can be deduced from the stone blocks erected at the entrance of the woods, which carry inscribed the Lex Spoletina the law regulating the use of the sacred woods dedicated to Jupiter. Later, in 217 BC, during the Punic Wars, and after his victory at Lake Trasimeno, Hannibal tried to lay siege to Spoleto, but was fended off. Thanks to the resistance of the town, he was forced to make a detour, and instead of proceeding to Rome, he headed for Campania. For its loyalty to Rome and its offer of military aid, and for its obedience to Rome, the town was rewarded with a public announcement of gratitude on the part of the Roman Senate around 209 BC. The season of good relationships between Spoleto and Rome continued for a long period. A wall of about 1,500 metres in polygonal blocks surrounded the town. This impressive wall remains as one of the major monumental works of the ancient town. 
It follows the slopes of the hills and supplied the ancient city with a solid structural base, perched as it was on the rocky foundation. The Acropolis stood on a hilltop in the sacred area of Santalia. According to popular legend, an underground passage connected the Acropolis to the town. Its temples were completely destroyed in the Middle Ages during the construction of the Rocca Alburnoziana. The monumental grandeur and majesty of the important public buildings came about in the first century BC thanks to the introduction of cement that facilitated their construction. In 90 BC, Spoleto became a municipium, a municipality. In 82 BC, after the warfare between Silla and Mario, which ended in the defeat of Mario on the plain of Spoleto, General Crasso retreated to Spoleto awaiting reinforcements. The town was most probably sacked. To add to this political turmoil, there was also an earthquake in 63 BC. There followed a long period of economical and political stability during the Imperial Age. With the subdivision made under Augustus, Spoleto became the sixth Reggio of Umbria. A fragmented inscription found on the cistern of the Roman villa reads Flavia Vespasia Polla to Caligula Tradition has it that the Roman house belonged to Flavia Vespasia Polla, the mother of Emperor Vespasiano, who ruled from AD 69 to 79.
The villa is an excellent example of a noble household during the first years of the Roman Empire. It was built around the first century AD, was frequently restored, and continued to be lived in for a long time. As with most Roman residences of important social standing, it lay on a long axis that went from the entrance hall, fortress, through to the central room, atrium, down to the main reception hall, tablinum. The Roman villa was open to visitors and the owner's social and political events took place there. Mosaic art had its artistic zenith in the 2nd 1st centuries BC and during the imperial age became widely diffused. It was an element of great luxury. The mosaics were in plain black and white, but with complex linear and geometric motifs, which were repeated ad infinitum or in various combinations to great effect. The Forum was the judicial and political centre of the town. It had an enormous temple dedicated to the Capitoline Zeus and a huge portico overlooking the square, which was teeming with taberni where shopkeepers and craftsmen sold their wares. It was situated in the square where today's market is found. Along the eastern side of the Arch of Drusus, probably dated AD 25, and so called because of the inscription in honour of Drusus and Germanicus, the sons of Tiberius, was the temple of Sant Ansano, a rectangular edifice swallowed up by the church of the same name built on the site. It was probably erected at the beginning of the first century AD, as can be gathered from the regularity of the structure and from the characteristics of the frieze. On the southern slopes of today's urban area is the theatre, which dates back to the first century BC. Of the few surviving items found in the theatre, there are two portraits that give us some idea of chronology. One is from the time of Julius Caesar and the other of Augustus. structure, only the steps of the cavia remain and the foundations of the stage facing towards the inner inhabited area.
The theatre was built on an artificial platform. The structure of the cavea suffered great damage shortly after its construction. Perhaps due to an earthquake, the sector towards the valley dropped by about a metre, thus requiring restoration even in ancient times. In the 1950s, when the theatre was again brought to light, the damaged cavea was rebuilt in cement, leaving in clear view what remains of the original flight of steps. The cavea is 70 metres in diameter and is composed of a series of radiating spaces designed to sustain the external steps. Two great doors opened onto the semicircular ambulacro, which gave access to the various sections of the auditorium. The cavea borders the orchestra, which preserves the original paving in white and coloured marble. The paving was probably commissioned at the beginning of the 4th century by the imperial authority, the owner of the quarry from which the material came. Closing the orchestra is the Murus Pulpiti, still partially decorated with marble covering which can be seen in various niches. The art of drama which has its origins in Greek civilization, was adopted and adapted by the Romans over the centuries. In the last years of the Roman Empire, it was widely popular with everybody, irrespective of class or social position. Cicero, an enthusiastic fan, describes the development of other forms of theater besides the traditional comedies and tragedies of the Greeks. These include popular rustic plays, burlesque and farce, as well as mime and satire. The theatrical representations took place during religious festivities, moments of triumph, funerals of important men, the inauguration of new public buildings. Some of them lasted several days and were known as ludi. <laughs> Part of the stage is taken up by the reconstructed apse of the medieval church dedicated to Saint Agatha, who was particularly venerated by the Goths. The archaeological museum is situated within the monumental complex of St. Agatha. It was formerly a Benedictine nunnery 
and was later transformed into a prison. Two arches of the ancient Sanguinario Bridge were discovered in 1817 on the bed of the river Tessino, near what is now Piazza Garibaldi. They were completely interred and below the present road level. Tradition relates the bridge to two inscriptions where mention is made of four aldermen, the magistrates who occupied the highest offices in municipal administration. The amphitheatre is set between the river Tessino and the ancient city walls. It dates to the 2nd century AD and has the traditional elliptical shape. The first mention of it is in AD 545, when, during attacks on the city at the time of the Gothic Wars, Tortilla used it as a fortress. There is evidence also that a part of the arena was used by the church of San Gregorio de Griptis from A.D. 1115. Later, the amphitheatre was occupied by the convent of the Four Clares. Many shops sprang up around it, and in the 14th century, it was progressively dismantled for the construction of the Rocca Albornoziana. It was used as a kind of quarry or source of building materials. The building of the medieval walls must have been the cause of the disappearance of the northeast section of the auditorium. The most majestic amphitheatre is, of course, the Colosseum, also known as the Flavian Amphitheatre, as it was built under the Emperor Vespasiano. Of the Flavian dynasty, and completed by his son Titus. The Bridge of Towers, Ponte delle Torri, to which Goethe dedicated a whole page in his travels to Italy, is 236 metres long and 90 metres high. The colossal bridge is formed by ten arches and stone pillars and connects the Sant'Elia and Monteluco hills. It was built in the Middle Ages, probably on the site of an old Roman aqueduct that carried water to the city from the Cortacione River.
the territory which extends around today's Castel Ritaldi, Giano dell'Umbria and Campello was once known as Ager Spoletinus and includes the urban centre and the course of the river Clitunno. The river Clitunno was much wider than it is at present and was navigable like the Tiber until an earthquake in AD 446 reduced it to a mere stream. Many small votive chapels were built along the river. The most important was the one dedicated to the god Clitunno in the role of oracle. The little temple of Clitunno was constructed in the Middle Ages with precious materials and local stones taken from the funeral monuments and temples found in the immediate neighbourhood. This probably accounts for the classical architecture of the temple. The spread of villas in the Ager Spoletinus gave rise to early agricultural expansion. The tombs and funeral monuments discovered in the countryside around the town bear witness to the settlements. One extraordinary example is the imposing funeral monument near Cortaccione. The enclosure is formed by a wall in opus reticulatum with huge blocks of semicircular limestone. Similar construction typology is found in Aquileia in North Italy. A funeral chamber with a vaulted roof was discovered inside the enclosure. It was in use from the 1st to the 3rd century AD.
With the fall of the Western Roman Empire, Spoleto, like other important cities, was invaded by barbarians such as the Ostrogoths and their king Theodoric, who from 507 to 511 set his hand to the restoration of the city and to the draining of the valley which had become a swamp. In 576, after invading the whole of Italy, the Lombards chose Spoleto as the capital of one of the most important duchies, extending the political influence of the city across central Italy as far as the Duchy of Benevento. The Abbey of Ferentillo, where the first dukes were buried, testifies to the presence of the Lombards in the area. The presence in the Abbey of architectural material and the magnificent Roman sarcophaguses reflects the Lombard Duke's political intent in reusing the findings to renew the splendours of the Roman Empire. The history of the site begins with the foundation of a hermitage between the 4th and 6th century. The beautiful and isolated site, surrounded by woods and cliffs, was perfect for spiritual meditation. Inside are five beautifully preserved Roman sarcophaguses, among which are those of the saints Lazzaro and Giovanni of the beginning of the 4th century, and one that dates back to the 2nd century, where tradition has it the body of Duke Faroaldo, the founder of the abbey, was placed. The altar is among the more significant works of Lombard art.
The Basilica of San Salvatore, another splendid Paleo-Christian monument originally dedicated to the martyr Concordio, was rebuilt and dedicated to the Saviour in the Lombard period. The Basilica is an exceptional reappearance of classical style, where elements of the East and West are found. It is laid out like a basilica and was originally divided by two rows of Doric columns. The presbytery has Corinthian columns and Doric beams. The frieze is decorated with motifs of flowers and spiral designs, among which can be found the palmed cross, carved in the 6th century. It was part of a great monolith from a Roman funeral monument of the 1st century AD. The Lombard Duchy of Spoleto subsequently passed to Frank and German dynasties and continued to thrive and flourish and be independent right up to the 12th century. Over the centuries, Spoleto has held a leading role in history. In the last 50 years, it has transformed from a strategic stronghold to a cultural center of international fame. Its spectacular historical monuments and its natural beauty form an exceptional backdrop to the many prestigious manifestations dedicated to art and in particular to music and ballet, with which it welcomes and entertains visitors from all over the world. 